On today's show, what the heck is going wrong with the Chevy Bolt EV? Faleo comes up with an intriguing way to keep lenses clean on sensors, and we'll tell you why autonomous cars could cut car sales in half. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the automotive industry. Say, what the heck is going on with sales of the Chevrolet Bolt EV? Back in July, General Motors said it was boosting production of the little electric car because demand was so high. But sales of the car are plummeting in the U.S. market. They were down 41% in the last quarter. And according to Ward's data, there's a 92-day supply of the car, up from 52 days a year ago. GM says sales are down because it's diverting production to Canada and South Korea. Sure enough, sales of the Bolt in Canada were up 23% in the third quarter, but that's only an increase of 85 cars. Sales in South Korea for the first half of the year, which is the latest data we have available, were up a whopping 700%. But that's an increase of fewer than 2,000 cars. Meanwhile, GM has nearly 6,000 Bolt EVs sitting on dealer lots in the U.S. waiting for customers to show up. So GM's claims that it needs to boost production don't hold water. And we wonder, what's really going on? By the way, here's a little factoid for you to tuck away. Did you know that the Bolt EV is actually classified as a truck in the U.S.? Strange but true, it's not classified as a passenger car. And speaking of sales, the auto industry is in a meltdown in Europe. LMC Automotive reports that new car registrations plummeted 25% to a SAR of only 11.3 million versus 18 million a year ago. The culprit is the new worldwide harmonized light vehicle test procedure, what they call the WLTP. Europe is now using new test methods, including on-road testings of cars, for emissions. And it turns out many models are failing the test, including most plug-in hybrids. There's also a backlog of cars waiting to get approval because the WLTP takes a lot longer to conduct. Turns out the Chinese market is also slowing down. Sales of passenger cars dropped 4.5% last month, while sales of commercial vehicles were up 16%. The total market's down 2.5%. LMC Automotive says the auto industry is too important to China and the government will likely come in with tax cuts or other stimulation packages to get sales going again. All we can say is that a market that depends on government subsidies is a market that's headed for dark days of reckoning. Hey, coming up next, Vallejo has a clever way to keep lenses clean for the sensors and cameras on cars. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Exxon Mobil. Honda made a big splash in the news when it announced it's investing in GM's cruise automation. Actually, Honda had been in talks with Waymo and was close to signing a deal, but it walked away, in part because... Waymo was not willing to share its autonomous technology. We also wonder if this meant that Waymo was not going to allow Honda to get its hands on the data generated by the vehicles. As we've said many times now, data monetization is the huge pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that automakers are scrambling to get. Studies suggest that data monetization from cars could be worth $750 billion a year in just another decade. Backup cameras are very useful to have, but they often get gummed up with dirt and grime. So the supplier Vallejo has come up with a neat solution, what they call Everview Centricam. The lens covering the camera spins so fast that it whips water right off it, cleaning up the view. Vallejo says this would be good for automated vehicles to ensure that their sensors function properly. And it also would work with mud and dust. A new study from Equilap, a group that researches gender equality, says that General Motors is the number one company in the world for gender equality. It looked at 3,000 companies in 23 countries and rated them on 19 categories, including equal pay, 
gender equality in leadership, and work flexibility. GM came out on top because it has a woman as CEO, Mary Barra, and at the time the study was conducted, it had an equal number of men and women on its board of directors. GM recently added another man to its board, but it also just named a woman as its chief financial officer. GM is also number one because it does not have a gender pay gap across the company, and it offers flexible work hours and locations. And speaking of women in the auto industry, be sure to watch yesterday's AutoLine After Hours with Chris Lazat, a woman who's written about women who are enthusiasts of muscle cars. And coming up next, GM's former head of R&D says autonomous ride-sharing could cut car sales in half. 2.4%. That's how much air pressure the average tire loses in a month, and it can make a big difference. Visit ButylRubber.com to see how ExxonMobil's Halo Butyl technology keeps tires inflated longer. Strength from the inside out. Larry Burns is the former head of research and development at General Motors, and he's written a book called Autonomy that says the convergence of autonomy, electrification, connectivity, and ride-sharing is going to change the auto industry as we know it. He's our guest on AutoLine this week, and he discussed how automakers will be impacted by the change. The AutoLine This Week Powertrain Series Preview is brought to you by Borg Warner. I really think the big impact on the car companies then is, is twofold. First, I think most cars will get used 300,000 miles rather than 150,000. So that should cut the number of cars in half that need to be produced. But the number that get produced then will be how many miles are you going each year? So some people will argue more miles will be traveled in this future because young people can use it, old people can use it, handicapped people can use it. So maybe that might grow the industry a bit. I think the bigger concern is that it's going to become commoditized. I don't think the basis of competition is going to be chrome and zero to 60 and cornering and all the things that we have felt are important for car purchases in the past. I think it's going to be about the ride experience. So the machine itself gets commoditized. That takes a lot of the pricing power out of the industry. Well, that's what we need to worry about. You can, of course, watch that entire episode right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. But that's it for today and for the week. So go out and have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.